Hello and welcome to lecture 49 of my class from data to decisions. Here I'm going to show you how to calculate a correlation matrix in Excel and in R. Then in R I'll also uh, standardize a data set. So first of all, in Excel, let's go up to the top of the spreadsheet. Here's a spreadsheet with that body fat data set. All previous lectures that this is a data set where measuring body fat in a very accurate way, but then measuring a bunch of other body measurements, age, weight, height, circumference of the neck, chest, abdomen, hip, etc., etc., with the idea of building a model that can predict body fat because body fat is very difficult to measure. One of the problems we discovered when we tried to build a model using some of these measures is that these many of these measurements are correlated with each other. In other words, this data set suffers from severe multicollinearity. Now, not as bad as some data sets, but worse than others. So it's bad enough that we, we want to, first of all, detect multicollinearity and then do something about it. So as a preliminary step, the first way we talked about detecting it, and we'll talk about more coming lectures, is to use the correlation matrix. So here is a correlation matrix in Excel. You kind of have to do this manually. So I set up this whole matrices manually using all the measures. The first column I made the percent body fat. The intersection of, of every row and column is the correlation between these two variables. So x1 versus x10, where x1 is age and x10 is ankle circumference, uh, etc. The diagonal is always one because you know x3 is always 100% correlated with x3. Correlation coefficient is always one. Uh, then I typed in the formula, Corel, which is Excel's formula for calculating the correlation coefficient. Uh, and then I have to kind of modify it for each of these and turn it into an array. It's a bit cumbersome. The first row. Uh, is all of the variables correlated with y, and then subsequent rows are variables, regressor variables correlated with other regressor variables. So you can do that. It takes a little bit of time to get it set up, typing in these formulas, etc. Let's do it in R because we're going to find out it's ex exceptionally easy to do in R, like many things that are hard to do in Excel are really easy to do in R. So here's an R script that loads up uh, the, the data. Here I'm, I'm, I'm created a somewhat reduced data set, but you can load up the full body fat data set just as easily. Uh, this one only has six or seven variables, uh, regressor variables, plus the body fat. So I will load in that CSV file. Uh, of course, I can plot it as we've done before, where we see this matrix. Um, of uh, values and so we get a kind of a visual correlation so here we see chest and abdomen are are highly correlated with each other uh, you can see that quite visually but we want to calculate the numerical values well in a, in r we simply use the function cor core for correlation just give it the entire uh, data frame and it will give you a correlation matrix so i simply Run that, and then if I want to plot, print that out, uh, I show it here on the bottom. Now I had one, two, three, four, five, six regressors plus the body fat, so it's not the full data set. Makes it a little easier to fit on the screen, but you see again that exact same format we saw before. The diagonals are all one, the top row, I put body fat as the first column in my data set, the top row is correlation of each of the variables. The response. So we want that row to have all kinds of high correlations in it, uh, and then we want the other rows to be low correlations, meaning uh, low correlations between the different regressor variables. Obviously, we see some high correlations. Now that's a lot easier to do than in Excel. Any uh, uh, data frame of of values of any size, you can just type in this function core, and you'll get it. The next thing we talked about in, a, in the previous lecture was how to standardize the data set. In other words, uh, 
how to subtract off the mean, divide by the standard deviation. Well, again, there's a simple function for doing that. It's called scale. The defaults are uh, to center and divide by the standard deviation of each variable, uh, but we can, in fact, set some parameters to only center it or only scale it, but the default is to do both. So if I do scale of body fat, that will produce an array, a matrix, has been scaled. But it outputs actually in a in a format that is is a matrix, but not a data frame. So if I want to put it into the format of a data frame for subsequent modeling, uh, I need to use this second command called data frame. Data frame takes a matrix and outputs a slightly formalized version of that matrix called a data frame. Uh, and so that's all this does. And if I run that command, I will create a new uh, uh, data frame called body fat 2. Uh, you see it's still 251 observations and seven variables. If I go and look at body fat, see the raw data itself. If I look at this body fat 2 variable, you see it's all the same rows and columns, but now they've been standardized. So uh, divide by uh, subtract off the mean and then divide by the standard deviation. So you're going to get numbers that are, you know, between you know minus two, minus three, uh, and plus two or plus three. All right. If I look at my original data, you see they have all the units and they change depending, of course, on what it is I'm measuring. So here you get numbers between zero and and forty for the body fat itself, but for uh, the chest circumference, you get numbers between eighty and one hundred and thirty. If I now go and uh, plot body fat 2, well, it looks like all the exact same graphs, except for now my scales have all been normalized. So I tend to get things that go you know, about from minus 3 to plus 3. Right? Plus or minus 2 or 3 standard deviations typically cover all your data points you have on the order of 100 or a few hundred data points. Of course, the shapes all look exactly the same because I didn't do anything that would affect anything other than the scales on these graphs. Uh, we can also, of course, calculate the correlation of this standardized version of the data set. Can you guess what the, that's going to do? Well, here's, here's the correlation we got before. Now let's see if we ran correlation on this new data set what it would get let's take make a comparison well hopefully you all kind of realized you'd get the exact same numbers right? correlation coefficients are already standardized uh, they're they're uh, the nature of the equation for how to find the correlation coefficient uh, is dividing by the standard deviations of the, the two variables so uh, and subtracting off means. So we're already standardizing each of our variables directly in the formula for how to calculate a correlation coefficient. So um, we, of course, wouldn't expect any difference. Standardization is not going to get rid of correlations, uh, It's but we're going to need standardization for some of the subsequent work that we're going to do, in particular, multiple component analysis and ridge regression. Coming up in future lectures. Till then.